Once two lifelong friends graced day buddy read of the Witcher series by Andre Sapkowski. Toss five stars to our podcast, Internet of Plenty, Internet of Plenty, oh. oh, oh. Toss five stars to our podcast, Internet of Plenty. Hello, everybody. That might be the last time you'll hear that intro for a while, <laughs> but it can only mean one thing. It means we are talking about The Witcher. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are Welcome. friends talking fantasy. <laughs> Welcome to another very exciting episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. My name is Charles. I am the show's bard as well as co-host. And with me today is my other co-host and lifelong friend, Dylan. I'm ready to talk some fantasy with my friend, Charles. That's right. And guys, toss five stars to your podcast. Find us on Apple Music or Apple Podcast or whatever and show us some love. That means a lot to us when we see that. And We only have like six reviews at the time of this recording, so one review would make a significant difference to our to our rating so if you like what you hear you like that little song go toss five stars uh but for now we have a very exciting day because we have a tier list set up for the witcher's short story collections we will be ranking all of the short stories in the last wish and sword of destiny we're going from s tier which is the best of the best of the short stories that the witcher has to offer to A, to B, to C, and then to the D tier. So, without further ado, I think we'll just take this in chronological order as they're written uh, in the books. So, we're going to go with The Last Wish, Story 1, self-titled The Witcher. For me, right out of the bat, I'm thinking S tier. I'm just going to... I know it's like not great performance to just right out of the bat S tier uh the first thing that comes up but this is one of my favorite stories of the witcher i love the action i love the the horror i love the monster this whole idea of what makes a monster you know we had this whole conversation last week that i really enjoyed and that was heavily inspired by this story and it's called the witcher i mean it's just a great introduction to what the witcher is and who Geralt is and i'm saying s tier all the way I'm not going to argue with you there, Charles. It's it's definitely one of the top stories. I wouldn't say it's my absolute favorite, but if we're going to mm-hmm. have multiple on S tier, then why not? I mean, this is the, the one with the Striga. It sets the tone for Geralt as a character, and I can't really ask for much more. I think we said during our actual buddy read episode of the last wish that this one was a good taste of what the witcher has on offer has uh, some action has some moral conundrums has some interesting Mm -hmm. interpersonal interactions and it's the one that andre wrote first years before he submitted it to a magazine and it won all kinds of awards and that went on to create this entire media conglomerate that is the witcher we got video games tv shows a whole saga of books i mean you gotta give it some love so s tier for the witcher and now what i would consider (laughs) book two uh story two i mean a grain of truth this would be the closest thing i hate to say it to a d tier that we have on the list yeah i mean if we're going to give anything a D tier, I would say we're probably in agreement that this one might go there. I, You know, it, if we it, need to set the tone. To anything yeah, on yeah. D tier, it hurts. I mean, because, okay, for me, C is like the baseline, right? And then if it does anything bad, it goes down to D. If it does nothing bad, nothing good stays at C. And then as good stuff happens, we move it up. So... 
Are there any things that you would consider a detriment to this story? A detriment. I, uh, I, I hate to harp on this, but I, I'm going to anyway. The, the treatment of women, not great. Yeah. This one. And mm-hmm. the I, ending I, twist didn't really mean anything. It was like a twist on something we as the reader could have never known. Like she was a vampire. How are we supposed to know that? And, they were in love, I guess, and then their love broke a spell. It's like, okay, yeah, I wasn't... And there's no, like, long-term consequence to, like, the whole arching story of the Witcher here. Um, there's better Geralt moments. Um, the main character, the, like, the beast, that's very Beauty and the Beast-like, you know, nothing too redeeming about him. So, I, C or D... It feels cold putting anything on D from the Witcher saga, but I think if we got to put something, we need that distribution. I'm I'm saying D for Crane. Sure. Of Truth. Charles, should we give our one sentence intro to these episodes so people know what we're talking about when we're That's fair. Um let's start that out here with the lesser evil, soon to be butcher of Blaviken, strolls into town to get payment for killing a Kikimora and he is met by pleas from a sorcerer to kill a supposedly cursed princess that is seeking vengeance upon said sorcerer. So, Dylan, he's also met by pleas from the princess to stand aside or aid her in his, her plot for vengeance. Will girl choose the lesser evil? I know you have strong opinions about this story. I'm happy to kick it off to you. Yeah, I mean, for me, instantly, I'm thinking S tier. I don't think mm-hmm. we have to overthink it. I don't think we really have to over talk it either because we've talked so much about the lesser evil at this point. So I'll just direct people toward our What Makes a Monster episode yes. where we talk a lot in detail about this episode, among others. And of course, our last wish, Buddy Reed, if they want to hear more thoughts on this one. But love Remfrey as a character, love the moral conundrum, yes, yes, yes. all that stuff. I agree. S tier all the way. It's also if you go back and listen to our Witcher TV show episode, this is the story that kicks off the TV show. So S tier all the way. Couldn't agree more. Let's keep this puppy rolling. Would you like to introduce um, the fourth short story, A Question of Price? Sure. Upon invite from Queen Calanthe, Geralt attends a feast during which proposals for Princess Pavetta of Sindra take place. But there are several surprises in store for our beloved Witcher. (laughs) Where are you sitting? This is like a really famous one, really important to the overarching story of the Witcher. Um, Do you, where, where are you leaning? Yeah, I mean, off the bat, I'm thinking that a tier might make sense for this one because it does not yeah. feel quite up to the level of the two that we've put on S tier. Uh, right. I think there's some some interesting dialogue between Geralt and Calanthe. It's great to have the, her introduced because she's such an interesting and important character in The Witcher. Um, but it just doesn't have that extra pizzazz for me, Charles, where... Like, it's not as memorable. It sets the stage pretty well for later stuff. For sure. I couldn't agree more. A tier all the way. Um, Like you said, it's missing the magic that the Witcher and the Lesser Evil have in the S tier. There's a few things holding it back. This whole thing of, like, Dooney's a porcupine (laughs) and um, Pavetta is this, like, you know, her, her power is that she breaks down and cries, and that's what creates all this huge calamity. Like, it's just a few things like that holding it back. But there's tons of super, super strong moments here. I love Queen Calanthe. Her introduction is a really strong introduction to the Law of Surprise. Really interesting um, idea there, this idea of destiny. And it's the beginning of, like, basically the Witcher saga kind of starts here. Right, it's the introduction of how Girl got involved in all of this in the first place, and the show does a great job of showing um, Girl kind of struggling with whether he should get involved or not in any of this at all in the first place. So, a tier all the way. I agree. Nice. Uh, so let's move on to our fifth story, the Edge of the World. Uh, Girl hears word of a devil. That turns out to be uh, Sylvan, which leads to Geralt and Dandelion interacting with the elven leader, Philavandrel. Um, I don't know. This was a, 
a C tier for me. Uh, maybe bump it up to a B for the word devil, <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's in the realm of where I am with with this story. It is missing the best piece from the Netflix series episode of this, which is uh, the toss a coin to your witcher, which inspired <laughs> you Charles to right? It's missing that in the short story. There's no toss a coin to your witcher in that. So I know that would have bumped it up a whole tier class at least. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but that song's a big deal. I'm fine with C. I think if you were coming in and saying B Charles, I would probably, go ahead with that there's some funny moments i I like it's the introduction of dandelion too i hate to put that in d there are some funny moments like you said um for me it's kind of long it's kind of meandering and the reveal at the end they're just kind of like you know what just let him go and it's like okay i kind of want to put it in in d tier but Uh. you know what Go C. I'm I'm happy with C. I'm happy with C. Uh, so this is a big one. The last wish. Would you like to uh, introduce us to story six sure. here? Sure. When Dandelion gets horribly injured by a djinn during a fishing outing, Geralt seeks aid from the mysterious sorceress Yennefer. So it's our intro to Yennefer in the books mm-hmm. here. So there, you got to think that it gets some credit for getting her involved in the story for sure and i like dandelions there i like the gin you know there's a funny moment where Geralt like hits the guard with the coins he's like money opens all doors you know so like <laughs> i think that was the story right the last wish and i don't know i, I actually don't know now that i said it yeah but i feel like it that is might have been in, i feel like that might have been in a story in the sort of destiny I don't know. Someone tell no, us. it definitely wasn't. Someone tell us. But I have a feeling it's in the last wish. That's what I'm leaning on. And for me, I'm happy to put this in at least A tier. I don't Ooh. know. I, I think Witcher and Lesser Evil are in a realm all of their own. Yeah. Right. I, I don't think I don't think any other short story in this book is gonna hit S tier. But I'm happy to give it A tier. I'm fine with going A tier if you want, Charles. I was actually leaning toward B tier. I, really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean What kind of brings it what kind of brings it from A to B for you? For me it's just seeing a question of price there and knowing that I like a question of price significantly mm. more than I like the last wish. But I, I'm not going to go to bat about this. It's just going to not super besides the emperor's introduction like not a ton happening not a ton that's memorable for me i okay. i remember just more i mean there's the famous bath break. scene this is where we get introduced yeah, to lilac okay. and gooseberries like ah uh, i'll res- i'll put i'll put it in b i i think it would be at home at either a or b we're kind of split on this one i think fans are going to want to see that in a i i think witcher fans uh, I just think it's so iconic, but I'm happy to put it in B to get a little more of a distribution here. I will not um, capitulate to the fans. <laughs> <laughs> so we're halfway through now. We just finished The Last Wish. Pretty even spread here, although I will say the most represented tier is S tier. <laughs> we have two stories in S, The Witcher and The Lesser Evil. A tier, we have Question of Price. B tier, The Last Wish. C tier, the edge of the world, and D tier, a grain of truth. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. I think that the Last Wish stories are better overall than the Sword of Destiny Agreed. stories. So Agreed. I think we're going to see this even out a little bit. I agree 100%. The Last Wish is the best introduction to The Witcher there is. Sword of Destiny is good, but Last Wish way more consistent. So let's get into it. We're now into this books of the last wish. Um, and we do, I don't know if we did spoilers at the top of this, but um, spoilers warning <laughs> for for this. I'll put it in the description and everything. But <laughs> don't listen to a tier ranking link for a thing you haven't read. Uh, <laughs> Is that fair? I don't know the tier I ranking think culture, Charles. I think you're more <laughs> embroiled in that than I am. <laughs> I, I I'm not too worried about it. And uh, let's go. It, we're into the bounds of reason. This is with Geralt and three jackdaws, and um, Yennefer's there, and they 
you know, they've Gerald and Never have already broken up. There's the Golden Dragon, blue blah blah, all that stuff. Um, blue blood deed. You, blue blood deed. Where are you sitting <laughs> with uh, Bounds of Reason here? Uh, I think it's between B and C is kind of where I'm thinking. I'm wondering if that yeah. resonates for you, Charles. It does. So I think then if we're thinking C is kind of like this doesn't do anything for me. Like a neutral and, kind of vibe. Yeah, but it doesn't, it's not bad. And B is kind of like, okay, there's there's some value here. Then I'll probably go B then. I think it's, uh. Wow. Charles, dude. I'm leaning towards C, and okay. I'll. Then this is why I do not like, you know, the whole at the beginning the gratuitous sex stuff. It kind of puts a like The Witcher as a whole has issues with the portrayal of women, and I think this is a one of those pieces of evidence against it. And I just wish it wasn't there. So that's a point down. Okay, and then you have. Things like, um, you know, the twist, which was fine, but I kind of predicted it, and it it was only okay, and that kind of brings it down. But then you have the good, right, of the the troop that's formed. A lot of really strong characters are here, and they have really interesting conversations about what to do with the dragon. Is it something you should kill or not? And you get a little more into Yennefer's kind of motivations. So... I think when you kind of do the math on all that, I think you kind of come out neutral at C. If you felt strongly about B, I would put it in B. But I see the last wish in B, and I'm like, this cannot be uh, in the same tier as the that's last fair. wish. I totally agree. It's also so long, Charles. I just felt like this went on. It's the it's first too story, long, right? Also. It's the first story yeah. in Sword of Destiny. And yep. then, I don't know, I was like, the stories overall in Sword of Destiny are longer than the stories in The Last Wish because there's like six stories in Sword of Destiny and it's a longer book than is The Last Wish, which has seven, I think. And I kind of, when I was reading, I was like, okay, this is this is still going because I was used to a little bit shorter. So I think that kind of dragging on feeling makes me feel like C in addition to all the stuff you said. All right, Bounds of Reason going into C. All right, we're on to our short story number two. You want to kick us off? Sure thing. So we're in a shard of ice, which is Geralt and Yennefer's new relationship is strained as they attempt to live together in the city of Aidginval. Sure. Okay. A love triangle forms with Geralt, Yennefer, and the sorcerer Istrid. Hmm. I remember you being stronger on this one than I was. I have a feeling I'm going to be stronger than you on this one. I would make a case because like we both said, the love triangle thing, not great. But we do get a lot of really interesting insight into Geralt and Yennefer and this whole will they won't they dynamic. I just love the idea of comparing the fact that a witcher is someone who is supposedly void of emotions. And then you have Yennefer who has you know, sacrificed herself, her former self to become a sorceress. And they both kind of have this sort of self-deprecatingness about them and linking it to this fairy tale of the Snow Queen and the Shard of Ice was kind of interesting, which is what makes me want to put it at B. But man, I see the last wish. I feel like we got to put the last wish on A, man. I just feel if you're it. feeling strong, Charles, remember, I, I, I said I'm not going to bat for the last wish at B. I'm happy to move Well, it up we'll to see a. how it plays out. But I have a feeling Shard of Ice is B, and the last wish <sighs> might have to get moved. What do you think? I mean, well, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a huge fan of a Shard of Ice. I definitely like the last wish more, and I think, yeah, as we're seeing the list round out, I think that The Last Wish is better than The Shard of Ice, so let's do it. I will capitulate to the fans. All right, <laughs> Dylan ever being the compromiser. And then I feel like you could make a better case for um, Bounds of Reason to go up to, to B as well. Um, well, let's not get, but I let's not like, get hasty, I as like your buddy Treebeard would say. <laughs> Good old Treebeard. I, I, I'll I'll stick to his advice on that one. So to update everyone, last wish moved up to A, where I think it 
it belongs and then shard of ice down to b and i think that's true right because the last wish does a very similar thing of like introducing characters and stuff but it just does it better than shard of ice does um so the third story from sword of destiny eternal flame Geralt and dandelion visit the big city of novigrad and find themselves in the middle of a wild chase from the shape-shifting doppler known as doo-doo impersonating a halfling merchant dainty biebervelt all while avoiding Chappelle, the head of the city's ruthless secret police uh, yeah it's is it C? interesting is yeah. it c or d is basically what no I'm saying. not d it's it's c yeah it's like okay this there's charm to this yeah. story i think to say it had any detriment to it would it, be a, it really a doesn't it doesn't it's the only detriment is that it's kind of irrelevant but that's yeah. the whole it's like a like you said it was a b storyline you know um a uh, filler episode. Yeah, filler episode. That's right. You know, if we're talking about TV like we did in the last episode, this is like uh, when Goku and Piccolo go to driving school. It's like, okay, here we go. <laughs> you, you can't be um, fighting evil every episode. Sometimes you got to go get your driver's license. So, yep. C, happy with that. All right. Uh, would you like to introduce us to the next story? story A four. little sacrifice. Geralt and Dandelion attempt to earn some money by working for the cheap and stubborn Duke Aglaval. While working for the Duke, they meet Shinez, the mermaid. Shinez, sure. Uh, the, <laughs> that spelling is something. There's an apostrophe <laughs> in there. The Okay, they meet... Uh, say it again, Charles. Uh, Shinez, the mermaid? Sure. And, and Essie, the, Essie the bard. Okay. Little I. So I'm glad we moved Last Wish up to A because this is a strong B, I think. Yeah. Um, it's got that really great ending. I love the moments where... It, did you listen to the audiobook in these moments where Geralt like, talks to the mermaid by singing? And I did, Peter yeah. Kenny does this like monotone thing. It's like, she nuts. <laughs> he says he loves you. You know, it's like really funny. Yeah. So, um, I'm thinking B tier. Yeah. No, that sounds good, Charles. I'm okay. I like it. Good about I like that. it. And, and I'm, I like the way this is coming out, too. You know, this, this makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah. This is a big one. Sword of Destiny. Geralt heads to Brokelon, the last forest, to deliver a message to the Queen of the Dryads, Eithne, from King Vensloff. During his mission, Geralt meets a young princess named Ciri. I'm feeling that off the bat B tier seems to be calling for this one. Right. I, I want to put it in A, but then I remember all that stuff in Brokelon. I'm like, oh my God. It's just not. Unfortunately, like, there's those great moments with Geralt and Siri, like we said in our last episode, how cute they were. And it's the introduction of Siri. So, such a big deal. But. Unlike A Question of Price and The Last Wish, I feel like the weight of Lady Ifni and Brokelon really, unfortunately, drags it down. I totally agree, Charles. Very The bright spot, obviously, Siri and her interactions with Geralt that are super cute. But, oh my God, if I hear the phrase, <laughs> this is Brokelon one more time, Charles. <laughs> I feel you 100%. So, Sword of Destiny. B tier. And I'm liking the way this distribution is looking. That leaves us with one more. Something more. Uh, would you like to kick us off with this one? Gerald is gravely injured while saving the merchant Yurga from undead monsters. Yurga puts Geralt in his cart in a desperate attempt to find help. Geralt takes one of his healing potions, which knocks him unconscious and causes him to dream in memories. Where are you thinking, tier-wise? This is a big one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if tier lists are supposed to be like gearing up and then saying it, but I already am thinking A tier makes a lot of sense for this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it's it's super strong in terms of bringing the whole Witcher short story bit home, and it has some super poignant moments. But at the same time, 
it's hard to say that it's up there with with our absolute favorites, right? Which are The Witcher and The Lesser Evil. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I <laughs> I agree a hundred percent. There's just something about The Witcher and The Lesser Evil that put them in that class all of their own. I think I, I don't think something more comes close to that. I think it's a really strong ending for this book, and I think it's the best story in this book right yep. so i don't think any other book any other story from sort of destiny made it to a tier right no question of prices no. Yeah, okay yeah so um this is definitely the highest ranking in sort of destiny i think it's really strong i like it a lot you know it's the way the sh- it's this is the way spoilers for the show it's this, this the episode that ended the show right is something more so um I'm happy. I'm happy with with putting it in A. It's just not quite the magic. I think S you need magic and, you know, there's not magic in the in the in the in the um, you know, metaphorical sense, not the literal magic happening in the book. <laughs> um <laughs> which you have to specify in fantasy. Uh so, just to review and then Dylan will have to decide if we're going to make any edits here. But in the S tier we have The Witcher and The Lesser Evil, which I'm very happy with. A tier, A Question of Price. The Last Wish, and something more. I think those are really strong ones that even casual book readers will remember. So I'm happy they're in A. Uh, yep. A Shard of Ice, A Little Sacrifice, and Sword of Destiny. These are a little more deep cuts, but are still pretty good. Um, B sort tier. Of B tier for sure. Uh, C tier, The Edge of the World, The Bounds of Reason, and Eternal Flame. And then sitting all by itself in D tier is a grain of truth. I feel kind of bad for a grain of truth. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm all right with yeah. where it is. I, <laughs> if you're pushing for an edit there, Charles, I think I kind of like that our our list is almost normally distributed. There's an yeah. odd number, I guess. Uh, um, no, there's not. But. Um, <laughs> uh, there's 12, but I guess that means if we're putting the like nine of them in this A through C, which we did, mm-hmm. uh, then we got uh, three left to put at S and D. So I kind of like that spread of things, and I think right. Grain of Truth is the least strong in all of this. Right. Um, I, I don't want to move it off of D. I'm looking at the C tiers. I don't know if any of them deserve D. Like, is Grain of Truth worse than The Edge of the World? I guess it is. Yeah. I think the Grain is. of Truth doesn't have any. It's just literally Geralt and this, like, werewolf creature in a room together. And then it ends I think with. It's like a bear. Yeah. And then it ends with there's a vampire in the mix. Yeah. So it's. Okay. I'm, I'm happy with that. Like, these other ones benefit from having Dandelion and Yennefer and, like, other characters and. They're they're not as you know outdated and antiquated in their style of writing, and so I'm happy with this. Um, the only other thing was there is the frame story for the Last Wish. Oh, but you didn't I put that on here. I don't know if it counts. Yeah, I mean, if it counts, I would. What's it called? Voice of Reason. Called Voice of Reason. This is the frame story where he's interacting. He he's healing in the temple, and the knights are like, "You gotta get out of here." And then he's like, "Okay." And then he leaves, and then he gets in that quan like that moral yeah. dilemma with like, if he fights the knight, they'll kill him, and if he loses to the knight, he'll get killed. So what's he supposed to do? And he just lets the knight injure himself, and he walks away. I mean, that's I didn't include it because it's not one of the like titled stories, but I would give it a yeah. C tier if I was to include it. Sure. Just because it was pretty much there to frame what was happening throughout. And then it had that yeah. cute little ending, I guess. But it wasn't like epic enough to move the needle to B tier. Certainly not. So, Yeah, sure. It would just be another C. Um, and there we have it. The, um, the Friends Talking Fantasy official tier list for the Witcher short story collection. It's it official. Ex- it's official. It's got our our stamp of approval. I think it looks great. I, I think I, this is accurate. I'm very happy with it, Charles. I yep. think I think we accomplished a great deed today, and uh, we'll be sure to share it 
out with the world on social media. So be sure to follow us, check us out, and weigh in. Do you think, like Dylan, should the last wish be B-tier? Are there no D-tiers? Should Grain of Truth be moved up? These kinds of things are open for debate. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to yet another very exciting episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. We have just completed our tier list of the Witcher short story collection. We're posting that on social media. You know we are. So do us a favor. Follow us on Instagram, FTF Podcast. Same with Facebook. Or follow us on Twitter at the FTF Podcast with the number one at the end and weigh in on this let us know what you think uh, you can always send us an email that's always an option FTF podcast at the FTF podcast the at gmail.com right T-H-E FTF podcast can't sneak that by me Charles <laughs> at gmail.com <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks you everybody for listening and as always go forth and conquer friends 